continue and speaker, Dr. Shahid Pervis from Pakistan, who will give us um, a breakdown on the current status of cancer registries and cancer registration in his country of Pakistan. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Uh, first of all, I am very grateful to the host, uh, Dr. Anthon, you know, for uh, giving me this opportunity and welcome to introduce me to the Russian colleagues. So indeed, it's a both pleasure and privilege to be here uh, in this beautiful city and country. Thank you. Uh, this is Karachi. Uh, the business, the only uh, port city, uh, business hub, the largest city of Pakistan, and a sprawling city like any cosmopolitan city. And this is a uh, the place where I work. This is a private, most uh, prestigious university called Aga Khan University, <clears throat> right at the heart of the uh, city of Karachi. It's a 700-bedded uh, hospital, but uh, because of our uh, capacity and our lead in the uh, diagnostic services, uh, Aga Khan University have about uh, 200 and 10 collection points all over Pakistan from where we receive these specimens, and 10 in Afghanistan, as you might know that uh, Afghanistan has a very, after war-torn country, very primitive uh, uh, you know, infrastructure, so a lot of pathology biopsies, they come uh, uh, to, from Afghanistan on a daily basis. Now, cancer registration in Pakistan uh, was started uh, way back uh, to begin with uh, in 1973 by Pakistan Medical Research Center. And the first population-based cancer registry was established in Karachi in 1995 uh, with the perspective of measuring the cancer burden through a sample population. So 1995. We uh, at Aga Khan University, uh, by virtue of the fact that uh, we have uh, our collection points in all provinces of Pakistan and receive a lot of, uh, you know, pathology from all over Pakistan also, uh, you know, uh, went ahead uh, to, um, to record the uh, various types of cancers coming from various provinces of Pakistan. Right. And so this covers a large geographical area. Now, Karachi Cancer Registry published uh, its last report in 2007, and the leading uh, person, she was a pathologist, uh, Yasmin Bhurkuri, uh, passed away young, you know, uh, and since then, you know, the Karachi Cancer Registry has been in doldrums. Uh, unfortunately, you know, she was a very private person and did not designate uh, any other individual to lead this position. So once she passed away, you know, everything as far as Karachi Cancer Registry is concerned came to a halt. Now this is Karachi, you know, the port city to the Arabian Sea. And this is the last uh, report from Karachi Cancer Registry uh, uh, till 2007. And if you see the uh, trends, the oral cavity cancer by 2007 surpassed the lung cancer as the most common in males. And if you combine the oral cancer with the pharyngeal cancer, because oropharyngeal cancer is more or less uh, same risk factor, same kind of cancer, squamous cell carcinoma, then it is, you know, much more common 
than the lung cancer. And since then, because I am a pathologist, you know, uh, the most common cancer which we diagnose every day is the squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity, pharynx, larynx, pyriform fossa, and like that. This is female. Unfortunately, breast cancer is also very common in uh, Pakistan, very high. And after that, even in the females of Karachi, which has a population of over 200 million. You know, Karachi, Pakistan is the sixth most populous country in the world with an estimated population of 200 million. And Karachi is the sixth most populous city in the world with a population of over uh, 20 million. So uh, oral cavity cancer is very common. And, you know, uh, this presents in very ugly ways at a higher stage. And, you know, this is one of those cancers, you know, the, which uh, the surgery alone is very mutilating, you know. When every, if you see every day, the two-third of the, or whole of the tongues are chopped off, you know, the jaws are removed. You can imagine, you know, uh, the quality of life, you know, of those uh, living patients. And as I said, you know, men, many, many, for various reasons, uh, present at a very advanced stage. You see, this woman, the neck is bulky, and this is all metastasis, you know. So, uh, as far as, uh, you know, precursor lesions are concerned, you know, uh, all of us know, you know, any white patch or red patch is bad. So, uh, leukoplakia and erythroplakia. Though most of uh, uh, these uh, turn out to be benign because white is because of the keratin. And because, you know, squamous cell carcinomas, they produce a lot of keratin. So, it appears white. But other proliferative squamous lesion, benign proliferative squamous lesion, they also produce a lot of keratin. So, uh, but certainly, um, uh, certain types of uh, leukoplakia, white patches, particularly speckled leukoplakia, you know, are certainly um, highly suspicious and must be biopsies. And uh, this kind of lesions are also, you know, um, may be considered as the screening programs in high-risk countries like uh, uh, Pakistan, India, and some other far, far East countries. So, white lesions, the erythroplakia. In this, the epithelium is so thin that the blood vessels which are underneath, you know, uh, they give a reddish glow. And again, you know, the uh, red patches are again suspicious and need to be biopsied in uh, most cases. You see this proliferative rucus leukoplakia, and this is a high-risk clinical form which lacks specific histological criteria. And uh, uh, the proliferative squamous lesions are uh, unfortunately also not easy to diagnose. The classical teachings of uh, dysplasia carcinoma in C2 doesn't fit with the proliferative squamous lesion. You know, there may not be any dysplasia in a malignant uh, proliferative squamous lesion and the other features are more important like dyskeratosis and uh, you know proliferation proliferative patterns etc so uh, for us is a uh, many cases are uh, diagnostic dilemmas as well now major culprits in the uh, western world the two most common risk factors are smoking and alcohol but in Pakistan, particularly in southern Pakistan, it is smoking plus chewing habits, you know. The chewing uh, pan, which is betel leaf, betel nut, and this gutka, you know, this is a something which is a new term. And what is gutka is basically, you know, it is a dubious mixture of many ingredients 
like uh, processed uh, tobacco, lime, uh, many other addictive agents, uh, coloring agents, and so on and so forth, which are highly carcinogenic, you know. And the uh, working, the, the, the labor class and lower middle class, you know, when if uh, Malcolm was there last year, you know, and he might have witnessed, you know, the, the you know, uh, the bus conductors and laborers, you know, their mouths are full all the time, you know. Even when they have to speak, they have to spit first before they can speak to you, right? So, you see, this is Gutka, and you see how they take it, you know, by taking this method alone, by choking many die, you know. So, revival of Karachi Cancer Registry is underway. In, 19, in 2014, the interested physicians from 11 leading facilities in Karachi, uh, including uh, our uh, hospital, Aga Khan University Hospital, met with the objective of reviving the cancer registration process. Uzma Rizwan, uh, who lives in New Jersey, New York, uh, has been involved also uh, in establishing uh, uh, various hospital-based and site-specific cancer registries in Karachi and Lahore, was also invited. Uh, the committee agreed to register as a non-profit organization with the new name, uh, Karachi Oncology Registry, with the goal of capturing cancer incidents from all regions of Karachi by inviting and encouraging other hospitals to participate in reporting to Karachi Oncology Registry. Now the problem is that the major hospitals, they, including our hospitals, we have hospital-based cancer registries. But that no one is reporting to a central place so that, you know, it uh, qualifies as a population-based cancer registry and, you know, uh, is more reliable. So that is actually the task. So advisory committee responsibilities uh, include, uh, you know, software, hardware, staffing salaries, operational cost, universal data collection form, data retrieval policy, confidentiality. So current status of Karachi Oncology Registry, which is now a new name of Karachi Cancer Registry, the committee currently explores various funding avenues to sponsor and sustain work. Local and international collaboration supports are needed. An introductory cancer registry workshop was conducted to train, uh, you know, the representatives of uh, all the participating hospitals. So, the cancer registry data will be collected by cancer registrars who are data information specialists who capture patient demographics, primary tumor sites, morphology, as well as a stage at diagnosis. Uh, and uh, in most cases, follow-up and management and follow-up as well. This ICCB, which is a, a part of Karachi University, uh, they kindly agreed to provide some initial funding of to the tune of something like 20 to 22,000 US dollars. And they also provided a physical space. Uh, but uh, the challenge of uh, uh, sustaining the, you know, the, the recurring cost remain, and we are trying to overcome that. Now, the other cancer registry, you know, Pakistan has uh, five provinces. Karachi is the part of Sindh province, which is the second largest province. The largest province is Punjab, and Lahore is the capital of Punjab. Uh, the Punjab Cancer Registry was set up in 2005. It is being is sponsored by the Shokat Khanna Memorial Cancer Hospital in Lahore. And it has 18 collaborating centers in the Lahore district. And it has 41 members, including nine member governing council. Uh, geographic area under study is the Lahore district. And the Lahore is the second most populous country after Karachi with an estimated population of over, 100, of over 10 million. Cancer cases diagnosed in the time period uh, you know, since then, it uh, organizes data, put it on the website, etc. Uh, highlights of PCR that in the last report which they published, 
uh, is nine, 2014. Total of 5,737 new cancer cases, females dominant with 56%, 92% adults. This is a report on top 10 cancers only, therefore the total does not add up to 100%. And data from Punjab Cancer Registry along with data from two other sources was used to determine cancer estimates for Pakistan and presented in the Global Can 2012 online report. So these are some of the uh, data from Punjab Cancer Registry. And again, you can see that uh, uh, in females, lip and oral cavity cancer comes as a second most common cancer. Right. And in, uh, so that was the total, that was the total. In males, in females, number third in, in Lahore Cancer Registry, in males, number two, And this is uh, about the 10 most uh, common cancers in children. And obviously, you know, similar to the uh, data from most of the countries. Finally, the third group uh, is the pa Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission Cancer Hospitals. Uh, it gives a high priority to the application of nuclear technology in health sector. And currently, there are 18 medical centers which are funded and run by Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission of Pakistan. These are all cancer hospitals, provide uh, uh, medical oncology, radi radiation oncology. And this is a public sector, so free or highly subsidized. And they have very good uh, collection of data, you know, uh, among their 18 hospitals, which are all over Pakistan. And there are two uh, out of these 18 medical centers, two are in Karachi. So these are also involved in the National Cancer Awareness and Prevention Program as well as maintain cancer registration. So finally, the challenges are obviously finances, legislation, because without legislation, currently, you know, we are working, we, are, we have revived the Karachi Oncology Registry as a, uh, it's, we have registered it, but without legislation from the uh, local parliament or assembly, the uh, all the uh, hospitals uh, which are which comes in that area say in the jurisdiction of Karachi they cannot be they they, they are not obliged you know uh, to provide data it's only voluntary but once we are trying to uh, to you know that a legislation is passed so that all hospitals it becomes they are obliged to provide data to the central cancer registry and that is very important for us. Motivation, obviously, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to do this and its uh, uh, significance. Recruitment and retention of registry staff. And so currently, Punjab Cancer Registry uh, is working well and it's expanding. Pakistan Atomic Energy Commissions, they have good quality data. Karachi Cancer Registry is revived by the name of Karachi Oncology Registry, but it has yet to, you know, uh, to, 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 to strictly, you know, things have been planned and done, but uh, hopefully, you know, our plan is to capture data from 1st of uh, this year, 1st January of this year, and hopefully uh, we will succeed in that. So finally, you know, the awareness is very important, and with that, Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Shahid, for that uh, yeah. very uh, encouraging talk. Thank um, you. I knew um, Yasmin Burgery very well. Um, I was always very impressed with her. It's, um, it's unfortunately the case that um, in many of the cancer registries in, in Asia, one individual has been the heart and soul, and without the heart and soul, a very unfortunate death meant that uh, um, you've got a big setback, but it looks as if you're, um, you're well on the way to, uh, to recover. Uh, we will uh, keep our fingers crossed that that's the case. Have we any quick questions Thank or you. comments for Dr. Pervis? Yes, uh, David Roda.
nationally for the whole country in one hit. Uh, that was my first question, but right. if you answer two. The second is, without it, do you have issues of, even where there is goodwill to provide the data, there are issues around privacy and other barriers without that enabling legislation? Right. Now, first of all, because there is no, cancer, no national cancer registry, so we are not looking for uh, legislation in the National Assembly and because uh, I am personally coordinating the Karachi Cancer Registry revival we are uh, uh, you know meeting the health professionals politicians for a legislation in the Sindh province and Karachi is the capital of Sindh uh, and same is the case you know I mean uh, in other provinces, so it's not national <laughs> because it doesn't exist, you know. Uh, the secondly, uh, you know, uh, there is a goodwill is a problem because whenever we go and meet uh, representatives of various hospitals, uh, you know, they have certain questions like how they will they are going to benefit from this. You know, what about authorships, you know, things like that. You know, I mean, if you are capturing data from, say, uh, 11 hospitals and two people at least are involved from each, whether a publication, if you publish it, will have 24 authors and, you know, I mean, things like that, you know. And also, you know, I mean, the, uh, their um, confidentiality and uh, other, uh, you know, the reasons which may come to their mind. So that is indeed a problem. Uh, goodwill is a problem. And that's why, you know, to make it mandatory, uh, the legislation efforts are underway and hopefully, you know, uh, they will succeed in near future. And that will be the biggest day, you know, because then, you know, then we will have the power of the law to enforce these things. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? If not, then we'll move on to the next speaker. Thank you very again, uh, Shavit Pervis. All right, I would like to make a comment. You say that in our institution in 1950s, there was a young researcher who joined us, Mr. Chakton, who then began to work uh, in the World uh, Health Organization and then started to work uh, in the Oncological Center in 1950s. He was the one who organized a lot of uh, trips and expeditions that uh, Alexei Mihailovich spoke about, including uh, those uh, to Middle East uh, republics and many things that you were talking about. He showed it in his research, uh, uh, different types of cancer, um, pathologies, uh, and so on. So it's really a problem of uh, bad habits, as we call them, and they are clearly seen there. Those uh, who take uh, betel, who chew tobacco and uh, other plants, uh, so if you could share the information about the content of it, I think uh, the audience would be simply shocked. There are a lot of things uh, that uh, we are not used to, to take. So all those things are interconnected. I would like to wish you a lot of success in your work. It's a very complicated task indeed. You do collect information from hundreds of hospitals, and there will be hundreds of authors. What contribution will they make? There is a technical work. There is a professional work. These are all the challenges. Thank you.